Hello Roy in West Haven, Utah. Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and tonight I'm going to be showing you how I cut progressive invisible bifocal lenses for your Ray-Ban 6238 color 2509 which is the shiny black in the 53 eye size. So let me take everything out of the packaging that Ray-Ban sends it to me. Of course your leather hard case clamshell I guess is called Ray-Ban case and Ray-Ban cleaning cloth that was upside down and turned around easily fixed. Now let's get on to the show. So this is it. The star of the show, the main attraction, this is the Ray-Ban 6238. It comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping. And I'm going to put that on there when I ship to you. So again, this is the Ray-Ban 6238, color 2509, which you can see is the classic shiny black in the 53 eye size. So let's begin. I'm going to take out both of your original demo lenses one of which says Ray-Ban on there, so I'm going to pop that out. I'm going to put it into the tracing element of my edger and hit start. A little stylus, the clamps come down, stylus is going to pop up and it's going to run around and trace the inside of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing over on the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame and you will receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses. My re receipt has my federal ID tax number so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars you will get reimbursed for this purchase whether they are prescription or not. Now Roy has the same problem I do. He has what doctors call too many birthdays so he had to upgrade to the invisible bifocal he does not have single vision lenses. They look like single vision lenses. The, tra the traditional bifocal, you can see that has the line going through there. These are invisible and will not have that. So, let me grab this. Your pupillary distance for your right eye is 30.5. My computer starts at 32.5. So I'm gonna tap this minus button a couple times to at 30.5. The height of the invisible bifocal is at 19. I'm gonna raise up your optical center height and I'm going to change the layout chart to a progressive. You guys haven't seen that chart before, or at least not in a long time. So now I have taken the liberty ahead of time to dot up your lenses as it is called. I'm going to try and lay that. I doubt you can see any of this, but move that out of the way. And I apologize if this is really psychedelic, but it's better than that. Sorry. Okay. I just want to show you. But there's, little, there's two little circles, one circle on each side of the lens, and on the temporal, which means the outside corner, if this were my glasses, this is the temporal, this is the nasal. But on the nasal side, it tells us the brand of invisible bifocal, which is the Essilor Ideal Advance, which is the, a premium digital freeform lens. On this side, the temporal shows me the strength, and I've got a little pen here. It's hard for you to see those little red dots that I put on there, so I'm going to darken these. So you can see them while I lay them out over on the blocker. So the optical scanner, this is a specialized pen, and it likes, it likes this. In fact, let me just do the back of this lens, see if I can wipe this off before it dries. Good, good job, good job. Let me redo that one. Now I'm going to put a, a dot on the back of the lens so the red dot does not come off and I can use that to measure your PD and what we in the business call your seg height without cleaning off. But the, the scanner will be able to see all of this so I'm going to come back down here with your right and your left lens. The reason why I put those dots on there, now you can see those dots very strongly. Is that proper English? That's my best assist English for the night. So. That is your optical center. This lens is known as a four drop because it is four millimeters down till I get the laser indications of laying it out. Just like the other lenses, it tells me that if it's in there oriented just right. So 30.5 PD, optical center height of 19. Lay it out in the center of that graph. These two dots laid out straight across that graph. And I'm getting ahead of myself. I need to put the block in there. Of course, 
You've seen these before, as I like to call them Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I need a double-sided adhesive sticker, of which I keep two up there. The black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick this one onto the first block. Place it on yonder platform. <laughs> there, you haven't heard me say that in a video. Place the second one on there. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Now on the back is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice tonight. The first time, it's going to attach itself to something magnetical there in the arm. Let me lay everything out again. Optical center goes where it is. Those two lay out perfectly. And hit that button and the arm's going to come down and place the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same thing now for the left lens. Let's go ahead and get the frame out of there. Lay that out. Pull the paper off the back to expose the sticky side. Line up that magnet with that part in the arm. Now the same pupillary distance on your left side, 30.5. Same optical center height of 19. Put that there in the center. Lay those two out opposing to tells me that it's level hit that button the arm's going to come down and place the block onto the left lens now this is the edger this is what costs forty thousand dollars it weighs 200 pounds i recommend everyone go out buy their own put it on your kitchen counter there in west haven utah and you can cut your own lenses you won't need this guy anymore to do it for you because at the end of this video you're not going to want me to do any more work for you but Let's just wait for that. Let's get a few more minutes out before I, I piss Roy off there. So, let's see. Let's pull up the shape onto the computer. That is the shape of the lens we are cutting. These are polycarbonate lenses. I do not want to polish the edge of the lens. Why am I using my finger? I've got this expensive tool here. I do not want to put a bevel on the front surface, the convex surface of the lens. I'm only going to put one on the rear concave surface of the lens. So, what am I doing? What am I doing? This is the actual cutting wheel. It's over on the far right. It's going to move to the center in just a moment. But this wheel is going to grind down the lens so it's the final size. This wheel with that channel, that little valley that the stylus is in, that's what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. This wheel, I'm not going to use this wheel. This is the wheel that polishes. If I wanted to polish it, I would activate that. But because these lenses are going to be hidden, it's not going to be seen anyway. And those who have watched my other videos know that I'm not a fan of polished lenses. So the, lens, the magnet is now going to do its job a second time tonight. It's going to hold it in place into the chuck. Or as I like to call it, the Charles. Because I don't know this machine well enough to call it chuck. So, we're going to line up in a three-point stance and standard... <laughs> Sorry, i got to talk football a little bit later. But let me uh, get this lined up. Alright, line up. Hut, hut, hike. Hit the green button. The door closes. The back comes out of the back field. Got a naked bootleg? No. So the clamp shuts and then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame to catch the ball when I throw it. I'm running two a days so I don't catch the ball when they throw it my way. But uh, So it is being traced. You see the shape that it'll be cutting. Now this, you see the cutting wheel beginning to spin and it's actually going to move to the center of the frame. Move. Hut, hut, move. There you go. Line up in formation. If you see a lot water flickering in the background or light, that is water running to catch the optical sawdust as it comes off of the cutting wheel. These are polycarbonate lenses, so polycarb cuts dry, meaning that there will be no water spraying on the lens while it is cutting. Where plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex does have water spraying on it. Now, you will see water spray onto the lens for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle to wash away any optical debris that you will see as it begins to form on the lens. Now polycarbonate is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is virtually unbreakable. Your lenses are bulletproof, just like almost like as strong as a football helmet. Bulletproof up to 22 caliber and have both UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. It never needs to be reapplied like the lotions, creams, and sprays that you have to reapply every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun. Now if you notice your lens is completely flat all the way around. Now it's getting the bevel placed onto the lens. The knife-like edge if you will. So it fits inside the bevel of the frame. Now Roy has asked me 
to mention the San Diego Chargers and tell everyone how great they are. They are the greatest team in the AFC West. If you don't count the Broncos and well, you guys will always beat the Raiders. You got that going for you. But okay, so water has begun spraying onto the lens, telling me it's in the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle. In just a moment, you will see another back coming out of the backfield. We're using sports terms tonight. On the, at the end of that is a spinning wheel, something you would find on a Dremel tool. That's what's applying the safety bevel to the rear concave surface of the lens. And you can see as it's doing that, a little bit of schwarp, a little optical sawdust is getting on there there. But hopefully the water will wash it away. If not, I've got another tool that'll do it for me. That's right, my thumbnail. So the door is gonna open. Let me grab a paper towel. Take the lens out, dry it off. Make sure it's not deflated so we don't have any scandals and I'm not benched for the first four games of the season. Run my thumbnail around there. That's right, I'm talking about the New England deflatriate. <laughs> okay, let's see. This is not a plastic frame where you see me pop the lenses in, so I actually have to use a Phillips head screwdriver. The red handle lets me know that it is that. The black handle is the flat blade. So I'm gonna do a little lefty loosey. Hut hut Omaha. I do not open it all the way. I'm gonna tuck the left the lens in, push it down, it snaps in. I'm now going to tighten that down without losing the screw. I just want to do a quick visual inspection. It's nice to have that flashlight here, and that is closed tight. So now I'm gonna come down here. Let's start cutting the left lens, flip that over to L. Put the lens back into the chuck, hit start. Just like before, the door closes, the clamp shuts. The lens is going to be traced by the two white styluses, calling out the play, making sure everything is going through. And you can see as it's cutting, making sure the lens is large enough and is always measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel. So you have the least amount of edge thickness showing, but of course with the lenses I choose, the polycarbonate, I had this custom grind A-sphere design on a four base to fit today's flatter curvature frames. You have no edge thickness whatsoever. So let me come down here. I'm gonna take this block off. And see the red dot is still there. I planned it right. The white dot got washed away, but the red dot is there when you pull these stickers off. So I'm gonna come back down here to my Marco 101 lensometer. Place the axis wheel at 135. Come on, it's on here somewhere. There it is, halfway between 130 and 140. I guess I can pull that back down. Put that in. Check the power of the lens. Come on, where are we at? Where are we at? We're in the high minuses for the last one I just did. Just cut a minus 10. So I'm at plus two. So your prescription reads, actually when you sent it to me, here's a good example. He mailed me his prescription in plus cylinder. We cut, doctors sometimes write it that way. We opticians cut the lens in minus cylinder. So your prescription was plus one and a quarter, plus a quarter at 0.45. So I have to algebraically add those together. Plus 175 and plus a quarter makes plus two. I change the sign of the, of the cylinder to a minus and then I change the axis by 90 degrees. What was 45 now becomes 135. Same for power for the left eye, plus two minus a quarter at 0.73. Originally it was at, hang on, originally it was at uh, 163 so I changed that by 90 degrees also so you do have plus two now you are far-sighted you need eight steps of magnification to see far away so that's where we're at plus two everything's in quarter 0 0.25 0 0.50 0 0.75 1 1 and a quarter 150 175 2 you could actually wear plus two over-the-counter readers as your distance in a pinch the bifocal strength is 250, so you, it's called an add because it means in addition to what you have up here. So the full reading power is 450. But let me check the one step of astigmatism correction you have. Now there is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. You have one curve on your eye, which is your plus two curve this way. You have another one, which is one step steeper this way. And that 135 is how we line everything up. Now see, I'm talking too much of the doors about to open and I'm still not even done with the left lens, the right lens. I'm not done with the first lens, how's that? So let's go ahead and take that out now. 
So, when I did plus two minus a quarter, I ended up at plus 175, and that's how we measure that. If you don't believe me, put them on. When you see better, you'll know what I'm talking about. At least you'll see what I'm talking about. Even if you ain't listening, even if you ain't paying attention, although something you're gonna see here later on, it's coming, Roy, it's coming. When you ask for a refund, so <laughs> okay no refund you're just not gonna want me to make any more glasses for you where's my Phillips head there it is lefty Lucy put the left left ends at the nasal portion first tuck it in temporal let that snap in there in the old days with plastic lenses that could flake when you pop it in there these are unbreakable bulletproof lenses so you don't have to worry about that more with polycarbonate that is closed perfectly. Let me take this block off. And the red dot is still there again. So I'm going to put it in. I'm going to spin the fine tune knob to 73, which was 163. We're going to put it in to 63. Put it in. Read the power. And again, I'm getting plus two. Check your astigmatism correction, which is minus a quarter. We're getting plus 175 again. Now, your PD is 30.5 for your right eye 30.5 for the left for a total of 61 i'm going to turn the card around and where those red dots are take my pd stick out where is my pd stick come on pd 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 where'd i leave it at pd pd come on pd stick come on don't fail me now where's all my stuff where's all my stuff thought i had a spare all right, I like using the red one because of high contrast, but you're stuck. Hang on, let me see. Nope, not there. Make sure I didn't leave it anywhere else. Okay, I should have been more prepared. Um, your pupillary distance is 61, so I'm going to place the zero against my thumb on your right lens, and when we hold it up, we're getting 61 millimeters there, so that is cut perfectly. I want to check the height of the progressive lens. I'm getting 19 millimeters. 19 millimeters to the bottom of the frame right there so that is cut perfectly now this is the point in every video that i mentioned when you get these in the mail and of course free shipping anywhere in the united states and utah is still the united states but when you get these in the mail there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight however there's an 80 percent chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other that is because 80 percent of people have one ear that is higher than the other and because of that statistic 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them, but I'm going to get these in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. When I take mine off and I press down, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. Put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing. Flip them over, press down. There is no wobble. Check each temple to make sure they overlap each other perfectly and neither one is askew. Check the tension on each spring hinge. Now that looks good. Now Roy, I have included, of course you're going to get your Ray-Ban hard case and your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth, but I'm always going to include one of my own premium microfiber cleaning cloths with instructions not only how to care for your frame and lenses, but for both cloths and your case so they will last you for years. But I'm including a Chargers blue cloth because he loves the San Diego Chargers. One of the reasons for their success is their quarterback of 13 years, Philip Rivers, who played 11 miles away at NC State. He was a Wolfpack. Go Wolfpack. Isn't that just the cutest? I'm not a Wolfpack fan, but how many teams get to do that? That's just adorable. <laughs> of course, none of the teams who root for my color of blue here in Durham, North Carolina, will... Uh, will like that I do that, but here's your Chargers blue. Okay, this is it. This is when you lose all faith in my professionalism. Now, Roy, like you, I grew up in the 70s, and I did not want to be a Cowboys or Redskins fan. That's all they had around here. So somehow I ended up becoming one of these. Now, we're both in the AFC. His Chargers, I'm pointing to Chargers blue, the Bolts, or uh, best team in the AFC West. My team, hopefully this year, will be the best team in the AFC North. We will meet in the AFC Championship game to see who will lose to the Patriots this year. God, I hate the Patriots. God, I hate those guys. All Patriots fans, ignore I said that. It's just... <laughs> All right, a little truth and honesty have snuck out. So that is it. But 
My wife, bless her heart, became a Chargers fan back with uh, LT LaDainian Tomlinson. She saw him in an interview, thought he was adorable, and she became a Chargers fan based on one interview with one running back who's not even with the team anymore, but still roots for him. You gotta love that, you know, her rationale. But then again, she did choose me. I was a rescue. She picked me out of the lost and found and uh, brought me home, cleaned me up, and uh, yeah, so she must be good at picking winners. So I tell her that all the time. You can't lose with me, honey, because you're you're with a winner. So, but enough about me, Roy, in West Haven, Utah. At least, look, me and you, me and you in the AFC, we got that going. Ignore that guy down there. Ignore that cup. But I hope you enjoyed watching. As I, cut, where's my flashlight? You know, I got a smaller one. I just can never find it. So, actually, I did find it. Wait, I was cleaning up. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? I found it down here. It's in one of these things. It's in one of these things. Look, here's my other flashlight. I finally did find it, <laughs> but I like using the big one. So, but again, Roy, West Haven, Utah, the big San Diego's, the ultimate San Diego Chargers fan. I gotta respect that. Props to him for that. But I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut the invisible bifocal for your Ray-Ban 6238, color 2509, which is the classic shiny black and the 53 eye size. And, oh, almost forgot, if anyone has any questions, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. I'm, I'm having too much fun talking about football. And tonight at 8 o'clock, oh, they've already had the kickoff. NFL preseason starts tonight. The Redskins are playing my home state team, the Carolina Panthers. Since the Hall of Fame Bowl was canceled due to the wrong paint sprayed on the field. How about that? Never heard that one. Didn't see that one coming. So tonight, NFL football starts. That's what's got me giddy as a schoolboy. The long, slow summer drought is over and finally some sports being played again. But if anyone has any questions, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or simply click the Contact Me button on the website. Roy in West Haven, Utah. Hope you enjoyed watching as I cut the invisible bifocal high definition digital freeform Essilor Ideal Advanced. That's a big term, isn't it? Um, this frame sells for $170 for the progressive lenses. Again, for a top-of-the-line digital freeform lens is $129 for a total of $299.99. Free shipping anywhere in the United States. And everyone else, finally, finally, you're ready for me to shut up. Everyone else got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.